In episode 1.4, you're going to be learning what methods are, how to create your own methods, all the different types of methods you can make. I'll explain you what method arguments and parameters are. Hello everyone, it is CryptoGrounds here. Welcome back to another Unity Idle Game tutorial video. This is episode 1.4 and this is the 2021 edition. If you enjoyed this video and if you learned something new, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and also consider turning on the notifications for future notifications of videos and live streams. Anyways, let's get on with it. So in this video, we're just gonna be doing stuff in our controller script. So any method I'm about to make here is purely for demonstration and not gonna be used towards the actual game. So first of all, let's explain what a method is. Well, we've created quite a few. We've uh, made three right here, and we've made a special one right here, which this is called a constructor, as I explained in the past. But we're gonna be looking at these three specifically. So we first have our access modifier, which is public, private, internal, stuff like that. And then we have void. So what does void mean? I'll explain to this in a second, but let's skip to the name now. So this is the method name. This is what you'll use to actually call the method. So when you're calling a method, you simply just type the name, generate flask, and then the parentheses and a semicolon like that. Pretty simple, right? So now when we write a method, well, let's say we want to create a method that we want to display something or we want to do something like subtract flask, okay, for example. So when we subtract flask, we're just going to do data flask minus equals one, for example. I'm actually going to call this subtract flask, but a void. So this is a void method. So what does void mean? Void means that we're not returning anything. So you can actually change this to a variable type, such as public int get a number, for example. So what we're going to do here is print something in the console. I'm just going to say, hello world. So in here, we can leave it as is, except there's one issue. Hover over this red line, return statement is missing. Oh boy. So what does that mean? Well, we need a keyword called return. However, you can't just do return. We have to return an int variable. Now you can either do this by creating a variable called int temporary variable. For example, I'm just gonna set that equal to three and just return temp var. So this is one way of doing it. We're basically returning three. So if we do this, let's go to our start method and call get a number like that. So now on start, it should print three in the console. And actually what we can do here is that, you see this is gray underlined? So this is writer telling me that I can make this private. Now, most IDEs will probably not tell you that. This is some benefit that writer will give you. It can tell you some uh, cool stuff like this. So I'm gonna make this into a private int method. Now, the reason why I'm making it private is because I'm only accessing this in this class. Now, if I was having another script, like in data or some other script, and it was accessing get a number, this would have to be public. So we're just gonna leave it as private. And since it's not being accessed by button, we can also leave it as public. Uh, let's run it. And you can see it says, hello world. Oh, one more thing. So it's it's printing out hello world. So we know it's being called, but we actually uh, need to print get a number. So the cool thing about an int or a variable method is that we can treat this as a variable. So if we sent so if we make a var, which is where we can determine what the variable is, whatever we set it to. So like right here, an int temp var, we can just replace int with var, and we'll know that temp var is an integer. But we're going to leave it as an int just so you guys understand what that is. And in here, we're just going to set var uh, number equal to get number. So we could set this to a number variable, and we're just going to print that number in here. Also, fun fact, print right here, this is a method right here. And we are putting in uh, a variable in here, and I'll explain what these are called. So as you can see, it printed out three. So we are returning the number three in here. Cool. So now let's do something special. What is this in here? How can we put variables inside of a method? Well, here it's called an argument. How do you create an argument? How do you get it to put in a number in here, like three? Like what if I wanna get a number and set it to seven? Well, it's pretty easy actually. What we can do here is delete that, go to our private int method right here, and we're gonna create a parameter. So a parameter is the, is the variables that we are going to be using inside our method here, and that we will need to take in as an argument. 
So in here, I'm just going to do int number, and we're going to set our temp var equal to number. And then actually what we can do is just return the number instead, because that's just a bit useless, unless we are doing some funky things with this variable here. So now we are returning the number that we actually put in. So that seems kind of boring. Let's actually add it by one. So what we're going to do is do number plus equals one, just for an example. So now what we can do is set var number, and we're going to do get a number, and we're just going to put in six. So now this is a parameter, which is number, which is type integer, and six is an argument. So this is what we're putting in. Hopefully that makes sense. Those terms are not as important, but if you ever if you ever hear these in like a, a coding chat or some forums online, you may see that type of language. So now we run, it should print out seven because we're adding one to six, which is what we put in. Very nice. You can do this stuff with string as well. So let's create a new method called private string modify name. So in here, we're going to take in a string as a parameter and we're just going to just call this original. And what we're going to do is we're going to modify this string in whatever way we want to. So what we're going to do here is return a space plus original plus some funky stuff, whatever we want to here. Just some random characters, I guess. And I'm just gonna put this is a string and then just, actually, yeah, we'll just do this is a string and then it's gonna show the original string that we put in. And now instead of get a number, we're actually gonna replace this with, uh, we're actually just gonna delete this variable altogether. And now we're gonna print modify name and then we're just gonna put hello world. So now what it's going to print is this is a string space hello world. So what we're doing is that we're just joining two strings together inside our method. Remember, this is the argument. This is one of the parameters. Cool. So now it says this is a string hello world. So you can actually have more than one parameter in argument. So what we're going to do here is add an int parameter and I'm just going to put count. Let's say we want to print this more than one time just for Random example here. I'm gonna create a. I'm just gonna create a var which will be a string, and this is just gonna call. This is gonna be called str, which is short for string, and we're gonna set this to this is a string, space, semicolon, and in here we're gonna use our count to add this to a string new more than one time. So we're gonna use a for loop. So a for loop is very easy. Uh, it uses the key term for, and you just do int i equals zero. So basically we're starting at zero and it's gonna iterate until a certain limit. Like if we put i is less than three, it's gonna run three times because it goes zero, one, two, three. And then once it goes to three, it'll immediately stop and not run the code inside the for loop because three is obviously not less than three. So we're gonna do semicolon i plus plus. So basically we're incrementing I by one every time we loop. And I can also do a print I just for demonstration. And what we're gonna do is do str plus equals original and then plus a space, just like that. And you can make this int uh, var because zero is an integer. So we're just gonna set I to zero. And replace this three with count, okay? And then we're just gonna return str instead. Neat. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to put in a string here. I'm just going to put CG as the string and I want it to display five times. So there you go. We have our two arguments here, CG and five, and our two parameters, original, which is a type string and count, which is a type integer. So now when we run it, we should see this is a string and then CG five times. Cool. This is a string CG, 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 CG. So I was explaining earlier, it goes zero, one, two, three, four, and that is five times. It starts at zero and it ends at four. And our count is five because four is less than five and five is not less than five. However, what we can also do is start at one and do I is less than or equal than the count. And then it will go from one, two, three, four, five. However, in the future when you start using arrays, which I will be teaching in a future episode, this will mess things up because, again, I'm going to explain in the future, but basically arrays work 
uh, based on zero. So it starts like a zero, one, two, three, four for a size five array. And again, I'm going to get into that in the future. So anyways, guys, I hope that made sense. And if you learned something new today, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button. Consider subscribing if you're new and turn on the bell for future notifications of videos and live streams. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great one. I'll catch you guys in episode 1.5, which will be a very special episode, which is break infinity. And that should be fun. Thank you guys for watching. and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.